A milestone of 225 Platinums brings about a very personal one to me, to this collection, as it has attached great sorrow and sadness, as I lost someone very dear to me recently. So this game was fitting in respect to travelling and going on the adventure, exploring as he always wanted in real life. Everyone and their mother should know Assassin's Creed in some way, be it game or movie franchise, uh, it's existed that long. For those who played before Origins, the game has vastly changed to what you know, and for the fans who tried Origins, this is just feels like an extra large slice of cake that you'll be very familiar with, but there's still a lot going on under the hood. For the players who don't know, hopefully my small review will show you what you're missing. So Odyssey, it's set in the Greek time period of when Athens and Spartans are at war. Uh, also, the mythology that comes with all that is thinly veiled on top. Everything is explorable via land or sea, and the difficulty is based on your character level down to certain areas. So if you're a level 5 and you go off uh, exploring, you may come across a level 40 area and get your ass handed to you. Also on top of that, there is an easy, normal, hard mode that just kind of balances it all out in different ways for you on the levels. Um, but thankfully, you can do everything on easy, um, so it can be a nice general platinum for you, or it can be a hard one, depending on how you want to play it. Also, there is no annoying multiplayer trophies here, and there is no annoying multiplayer full stop. I'm not a fan of that in Assassin's Creed. Good timing. Interesting. The game is a slow burner. I played the opening island, and it didn't grab me. I set it aside, I came back a while later in the year to give it another chance. So my advice is to stick it with it, uh, and you'll be rewarded. Once through the initial island, the history and the story of Greece and its non-playable personalities start to shine, and there is an overwhelming amount of missions to get stuck in with, so there's so much to do that you shouldn't really get bored unless you just don't like the gameplay and, the, and how it's being done. But my biggest issue of such a thing is missions are quite poorly done in that most are just fetch quests and there's not really much going on with them, there's no variety and that becomes a bit of a, an annoyance and it does feel like a grind at some points. What they lacked in the mission effort though, they compensated in a very rich and beautiful world with bright greens, blues, just to capture that sense of the paradise and how captivating that side of the world is, filled with random non-playable characters and animals just doing their thing as you explore, giving it a real kind of ecosystem and sense of life, but not quite as good as probably say the GTA series, I feel that there's just still something lacking to giving it that kind of real breathe of life in capturing those moments. The controls are a standard for any adventure game really. It takes a little getting used to with the abilities being thrown in. Um, so you're holding L1 and then pressing square to do an attack or then L2. In the heat of things you can get a little bit fuddled. Uh, even when I was doing it and I've been playing it for hours and hours and I end. You know, I still sometimes went mind blank and, and was pressing wrong things stupidly. Um, but everything kind of ranges from special arrows, stealth attacks, to big area attacks when you're sword fighting. So thankfully the, the game can be stealth or the bravado, however you like to play, so finding a style and, and the comfiness to how you want to play really shines as you can make your own style of hero. You're not really penalised if you're rubbish at being stealth, and you're not kind of penalised if um, you're rubbish at going all out sword fighting. You kind of find that balance and how you go about this game, and it works. The music is subtle and often its ambience plays with the animals heard in the distance as a noise filler on your journey, but sounds when being violent or achieving a milestone as um, it does have a hefty punch and it works well with the gameplay uh, in peace or in the action. It's just a very nice and subtle tone and it just works and complements the gameplay well. Minor game tweaks to Origins is that bounty hunters are now more frequent and annoying, but also have a rank and a league, so you can climb, um, so when you find a bounty and he comes hunting for you, if you kill him and he's a higher level, you become more notorious uh, and become more well known, meaning the more mercenaries coming hunting for you are far vi more violent and, and worse. Uh, also, they kind of stole from the franchise Mercenaries, where you go against um, the Cult of Cosmos, and it's all kind of like the deck of cards, 
from mercenaries where you have the small fries and as you kill them you start to find out who is bigger up the chain and you need to go kill them and assassinate them. So after about 60 to 70 hours of gameplay it's a 4 out of 5 for me. The love and the attention to detail graphically is clear to see but little was done on giving life to the missions and the grind of upgrading various things at first is overwhelming but then as you understand everything it's fun but then it becomes a chore but those things don't ruin the game and most should find this a steady and enjoyable platinum I just wish that the ideas they had they worked on better and just gave a bit more depth to them as it feels like they've thrown a load of things into the game and not really fleshed out everything Hope you like the review, give me a like, subscribe and give me feedback.